Affairs of the Art. If you're a lover of the arts, then this segment is absolutely for you. And even if you're not, you're going to find it interesting. We'll be talking to fine artist and adjunct professor at the University of Connecticut, Kamar Thomas. And he'll be talking to us about his love for art and also the bold statements that he makes um, about social and cultural issues. Good morning, Kamar. Good morning, Delia. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I mean, I had nothing better to do. <laughs> we're in quarantine. We're on. We're honored. <laughs> so talk to me. Um, and, and that opening statement is pretty much how you approach your art. It's um, it's unfiltered. It 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 speaks your mind. Um, mm -hmm. I want to begin before I get into your roots and so on. I want to begin with the statements. It, it's interesting. You said when you you moved to the states what mm -hmm. black man meant in Jamaica had a totally different mm -hmm. meaning there. Expand, mm -hmm. expand mm -hmm. on that for me. What do you mean? Yeah, so my parents' best gift to me was possibility, was the idea that I really could do whatever I, whatever I wanted to be. I can do all things and everybody knows the rest. It's not some of the things or most of the things or a portion of the things, all things. And when I came to the U.S., what black man meant was I can do some of the things. And I decided to make work about the possibility. I decided to treat what black man meant as a mask. That's my big metaphor. Mm -hmm. And the mask is something that you can put on, something that is useful. Everybody knows now in quarantine, some businesses won't let you in unless you have a mask. So masks have become more relevant. And this is the, the main metaphor, the main teaching tool of my work. Yeah. And I decided to make masks that have multiple meanings, that are beautiful, that are loud, that are really fun to look at, that inhabit you, that you want to be a part of rather than mask as hiding something. And so the difference in meaning is expressed through these masks. Yeah, it's interesting because, as you said, sometimes we wear masks, I guess, because we're nurtured to wear them, um, mm -hmm. particularly when it, it comes to identity. You know, we are taught that this is who we are, this is how we're supposed to respond to things around us, and, and these are the things that we do. How does this come to play in your work? Um, wh wh what type of medium do you use? Oils? Portraits? What do you do? Yeah, so I paint these very large portraits in oil, and the way I make them is very interesting mm -hmm. because I actually paint uh, abstract painting onto people's faces using face paint. I don't have any now because the, the quarantine mash up my supply, yeah. among other things. Mm -hmm. But I actually paint an abstract painting onto people's face. Then I take a few hundred pictures and then I use those pictures as a reference to make the painting. So I paint a mask onto their face and then edit it, putting on another mask and then finally paint a third one. So this, the final painting in oil, the big thing about oil paint is that it takes forever to dry. Yes. So you can paint layer upon layer upon layer and it will always forgive you. It will always take you back. You can fix most things. And as you can see now, I'm painting in different, different colors that because it takes so long to dry, there is always time to fix it. Much like masks are, there is always, you can always get a new one. You can always repair things. And that's the point. Yeah. The colors are, are so vibrant. Um, they're, they're so alive on it. Why, why, why such large size paintings? What type of yes. statement do you make when you do that? <laughs> A loud one. Yes. <laughs> uh, persistent statement. So I wanted to take that spirit of celebration of identity. So I'm not against masks. I actually like them. I think you need sometimes to wear masks. It's just which ones do you choose and when? And the ones I choose, the ones I prefer, are ones that celebrate, are ones that allow you to become better than you are, are ones that give you the possibility, that, that have you aspire. So now the masks that we have are for safety, to keep us all not sick. It's th those kinds of masks I'm thinking. Not so much masks that hide, but masks that help you to become 
Yeah. Well, um, the last photo we saw of you really put large into perspective with you sitting on mm -hmm. that stool and looking at almost an entire wall. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm about uh, six foot one. And as you can see behind me, these paintings now, that's their size. This is wow. uh, um, the one behind me is about 10 feet. The one to this side is about five feet by five feet. But I also make smaller works such as these ones here. Yeah. Something as small as this. Mm -hmm. It's the wow. large ones are to make a statement are the smaller ones help me pay all of my bills <laughs> <laughs> so tell me now how does a young man from titchfield high in port antonio um get first of all fall in love with art and then how did you develop this this yeah. this expression in you so with this foundation of possibility from my parents raymond thomas and altia Mowat, i met my high school art teacher his name was it still is Michael Lane and his son Jet Lane and Michael Lane he teaches at Edna now but he showed me what persistence looks like what just making artwork for a very long time at a high level looks like when I was fairly young mm -hmm. and then my college professor gave me another gift in that she was rich she drove an Audi <laughs> she was a painter she wore designer dresses and and wore very luxurious clothing and made the artwork that she wanted and she's she's a landscape painter and it was very very happy so these things between my both my parents and my high school art teacher michael lane and my professor these things gave me an inspiration that said what's possible and also if i just continue going i will get better and in fact i will more than likely be successful just because I didn't quit. That's amazing because there are a lot of young young people in Jamaica now who love art, but people say, no, what are you doing? You're going dead for hungry, don't take it up, don't pursue it. <laughs> but, but, but because you're exposed to people who are good at it and were happy doing it, it inspired you. What, what do you say to youngsters who are watching now who love art, Kamar, and might be thinking, is this something that I should do? Yeah, hear me out, young people. Your art is under no obligation to pay all of your bills. Nothing is wrong if you have to do something else. In fact, it might be better if you do something else and also pursue your art. In that way, it won't really become a job. But hear me out. Don't quit. Continue to make your artwork when you have the time, when you have the resources. Don't stop for three years and then jump back in. And if you have stopped, just climb back, climb back inside. Don't bother giving up just because things are hard, because things will always be hard. It will always never be enough. And if the making of the art is what you want to do, as long as you have the product in front of you, as long as you are committed to becoming remarkable, then people will remark. And then they will tell other people. And before you know it, you will be on TV, Jay, talking to Delia Harris from your <laughs> studio. <laughs> yeah, man. People remark, and you'll be you'll be able. Um, yeah. You are make remarkable work. <laughs> yes, you are an adjunct professor at the University of Connecticut. I think that's where you also did your masters in in fine art. Yes, tell me I about am, that yes, experience. Yes. yes, so I was an a visiting assistant professor in Ohio first, and then I became an, an adjunct, which is a part time professor here, and it is the best. You show up, you teach your classes, and you go home. And to become a professor is a, a different skill set, a different... It's teaching to people who will eventually become your peers. Wow. So my job is to package up my experiences and the, the skills that they need mm -hmm. and order it in such a way that they, A, believe they can do it, but B, see enough progress that they don't give up because I arrive so far ahead that it looks like what I do is impossible. It mm -hmm. looks like it will be very, very hard. And I have to point out that I was nearsighted. I got glasses when I was 16. And when it comes to making art, I mean, coming from Jamaica is, I'm already behind them on the curve. And yet here I am in front of you in the classroom. And here are some videos and here is some work. And yeah. this is how you build it piece by piece by piece. So teaching 
is my real job. The teaching I do is through my artwork. The teaching mm. is it's possible to be who you are through the artwork. And in the classroom, it's here are the methods, here are the tools. This is what you need. Wow, it's amazing work, Kamar. For people who want to find out more about you and about your work, where do they go? They can, I've always wanted to say this, type my name into Google or go to my website, kamarthomas.com. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram, O-H-K-A-M-A-R. And if you see me walking around live in person, just wave, I'll wave back. <laughs> I'll give you a nod of appreciation. Yes, but and if you say, Kamar, he'll know you're from Jamaica. Yes, yeah, you have to shout it. You have to say it with enthusiasm. Yes. <laughs> All right. It's such a pleasure talking to you. Um, you're such an inspiration. Thank you so much for talking with us. I'm glad you had nothing better to do but to talk to <laughs> us this morning. <laughs> You and Jamaica are welcome. <laughs> and one teach field. <laughs> one teach field. All right, come on. Thank you so much. Come on, Thomas, fine artist and adjunct professor at the University of Connecticut. Can you name it? All right, we'll put it to the test after this quick break. We're coming right back. <laughs>